Good afternoon. My name is Melinda Egging, and I have the honor to be serve as the president of the Denver Hospice. Thank you for joining us this afternoon to come together to remember a year with few equals. Today, we look outside and are attentive to what weather Colorado will bring us. But today is also a day to reflect on the past year. Today is a day to remember the lives impacted and the lives lost. 2020 came in rather unassuming. We heard a whisper of a virus. In the blink of an eye, our worlds were quickly disrupted. What we thought might be days became weeks, and the weeks became months, and now we stand at one year. Today we come together to recognize what has occurred this past year. Today, let us come together and heal together. This past year has reminded us that when death, loss, and tragedy come, we all experience a similar pain. That feeling is shared by all of us. Let us come together and remember our common humanity and carry a bit more patience, a bit more grace in our hearts for one another. I would now like to introduce Dr. Karen Wyatt. Dr. Wyatt is a family physician who has spent her 25-year medical career working with patients and staff in challenging settings such as hospitals, nursing homes, and homeless shelters. A true friend to the Denver Hospice, welcome Dr. Wyatt. Thank you, Melinda. I'm honored to be here today at this memorial service. We gather together today, March 13th, 2021, to remember that on this date one year ago, the first person in the state of Colorado died from COVID. We didn't know it then, but our world changed forever on that day. We had no idea then what the virus would take from us over this past year. The vast number of lives that have been lost in our communities, our state, our nation, and the entire world. Businesses that have closed never to reopen their doors. Employees who have faced the loss of their jobs and essential workers who continued to work at great risk to their own health. Hospitals that have overflowed with sick and dying patients, healthcare providers, first responders, and the last responders of hospice who have reached the brink of exhaustion in their efforts to help. Children who have missed irreplaceable opportunities for education and socialization when schools closed. Families who were not able to be at the bedside when a loved one died. Families who could not gather for weddings, holidays, birthdays, funerals. This has been a year of suffering and loss never before experienced by most of us. A year when we have become more isolated, more polarized, more angry, more fearful, more disillusioned than ever before. We have learned, much to our disappointment, that ultimately we do not have control over most of what life brings to us. We cannot change the reality of the virus and its devastating effects on the world outside of us. We cannot fix or remove the losses that have occurred in our lives. We cannot go back in time to those days before the world changed and return to what used to be normal and comfortable. Grief has been the theme of all our stories for this year of the pandemic. We have carried grief in our hearts, worn it on our sleeves, nurtured it in our relationships, and succumbed to it in our dreams. We can no longer deny or compartmentalize our grief. It is woven into the fabric of each day. Everyone on this planet has suffered during this year of change. And even though each of us experiences grief in our own unique way, we are united by the fact that all of us have experienced loss and pain. Many factors may separate us from other people on this planet. 
but our shared suffering brings us together in a powerful way. We recognize the tears, the anguish, the broken hearts of our fellow travelers on this journey. They are no longer strangers to us because we know deeply the pain they feel. But the time has come to begin the process of healing, not just as individuals, but as a community. Because healing of such massive grief can only occur when it is shared, when we recognize our connections with others. The first step in healing is to acknowledge the pain and suffering that have occurred in our own lives this past year. You may feel that your suffering is not as great as that of someone else, but set that judgment aside. Your pain is unique to you and deserves to be recognized and healed. Next, we need to accept the fact that we cannot change the virus or the devastation it has caused in the world this year. We cannot erase the suffering that has taken place, but we can change ourselves. We can change our attitude, our mindset, our behavior, our responses to others, our way of being in the world. Our hearts may have been broken during this year, but it is the broken heart that has the greatest capacity for love and compassion. The third step of the healing process involves finding the hidden treasures that have emerged in our daily lives throughout this past year, such as wisdom, kindness, and grace. The wisdom we have gained from this pandemic reminds us to slow down and take time to enjoy each moment of life we are given, for life is precious and fleeting and not guaranteed for any of us. We have also learned the importance of caring for our relationships and extending kindness toward the people we encounter in our lives, for a single act of kindness has the power to transform a life. Poet Naomi Shihab Nye writes, Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. Indeed, our sorrow has deepened us so that now we are capable of greater kindness than ever before toward one another, which is precisely what the world needs from us. And beyond the kindness we show in our words and actions, we need to develop a mindset of grace, an acceptance of and openness toward those who are different from us, yet still suffer along with us. We can choose in each moment of our difficulties to act from fear, anger, and blame, or we can choose the path toward healing the path of wisdom, kindness, and grace. Remember each day to find something in your life to be grateful for, someone to be kind to, and some opportunity to open your heart and mind to others. We have come together during this time to acknowledge our deep grief after one year of navigating an unprecedented global pandemic. We have come together to explore our experience of loss and to search within it for those hidden blessings that dwell in the midst of pain, wisdom, kindness, grace. This journey will not end for some time. Our suffering is ongoing. The future is uncertain. Additional losses are inevitable. We cannot control or divert any part of this path, but we are not alone. We walk together on this road of grief, each with our own unique experience of the pain. Looking out from our own dark night of sadness, we can see the stars shining in the skies and reflected in the eyes of our fellow travelers. We can see the light of a new day's sun bringing color to the horizon. We have suffered together, 
We are healing together and we will rise above this challenging time together. And now Chaplain Ron Cobble of the Denver Hospice will come forward. This is our time to remember those that we've lost during this last year. And I wanna share this prayer that comes from the Jewish tradition. And I've heard from others that many Jews pray this every morning to remember those that they've lost. At the rising of the sun and its going down, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live for they are now a part of us as we remember them. We want to take now a moment of silence. And uh, I think of Jackie Robinson, the famous baseball player, and his quote is this, a life is not important except for its impact on other lives. So as we rem remember these that we've lost during this last year, think about their impact on you and their impact on their world. <laughs> 